Hello everybody and welcome to Brick Vault. Today is another LEGO Top 10 Mocks of the Week episode where I show you guys the coolest custom creations I happen to see people building in LEGO throughout this last week. Like always, way more than 10 links are in the description below because there's more than just 10 cool builds that are made by people from all over the world. If you have any extra time, I highly recommend you check out some of those builders and some of those links that you can find down there in the description. And before we jump into the first build, there was a a new set of instructions produced for an amazing custom droid gunship built by Thomas Jenkins. It can hold a full squadron of super battle droids. The body is incredibly smooth and the shape for the head is built particularly well. The instructions can be found at our web store www.brickvault.toys. The video for this is also linked in the description below and let's jump into the very first build of the week. From the builder Know Your Pieces we have yet another facade. This is labeled number two, Grandpa's Store. If you're not familiar with this designer, he does sort of slices of life from Vietnam. And the level of detail here is awesome. I like that this designer builds a bit upscaled compared to minifigs, which means you can just fit a lot of smaller details into a space than normally what would be allowed if you were building to just normal fig scale. You can see a stone pattern on the sidewalk. The door shutters are only loosely closed, halfway sticking out. There's all kinds of snacks and gizmos, maybe phone covers hanging out in these giant plastic rows out in the front. The artwork for the sign looks great. You can see some electrical boxes that are shabbily held onto the wall, maybe somewhat barely hanging on. The paint is scraped away. You can see the loose brick underneath, and there's just all kinds of fun details to notice. Everything looks especially good considering that primary color is yellow. It really makes everything around it pop wonderfully. And now we're jumping over to Armored Bricks. This is titled LMMI, which stands for Lego Moon to Mars Initiative. This was submitted in 2019 to the Ideas Moon to Mars contest. And I actually am only seeing it now, so I'm talking about it now, but it's an awesome slingshot. I think this is a slingshot from the moon, so the gravity is relatively low. You can see an astronaut who's way up in the air there and then it's slingshotting out towards Mars, if I had to take a guess. The macaroni pieces that make up the larger bit for the rail is awesome. Everything here feels very clean, a little bit cartoony, but incredibly grounded, despite the fact that it's sort of a fun, silly concept of just a giant space shuttle slingshot. Excellent details, awesome concept, and I can see that a lot of you guys have been enjoying the monochrome builds that have been going up for top 10 recently from Ido K. This is called Grace, and we have an excellent excellent combination of those longer uh, wedge wing plates that make up the flowing dress. Also the outline for the eyes on the face by using the quarter round tile piece is something I haven't quite seen done before and it's incredibly effective here. I would love to see more of this approach for color builds later. I wonder if it would translate as well. Maybe this is something that just works particularly well because it is a monochrome build. The fingers and hands feel very lifelike. The proportions are particularly good at this size and as a piece the entire figure is held up quite Quite well. You can definitely tell why the title is called Grace. Now let's move on to the opposite of something graceful but still an excellent, excellent design from Andrew Evans. This is Avok the Chainsmith. If I didn't know better, I'd say this thing came straight from Doom, but I do not believe that is precisely the case. I think this is just some extreme sort of warrior type figure. It's got cybernetic optics on its eyes. The body is all spiky and super muscly and the chainsmith seems to have what looks like a, a very, very mean and aggressive gun. I think if you flip it down the other way, you can use those chains to uh, uh, do some type of very destructive melee close quarters combat. And it's not just the figure, but also the stand is uh, quite well put together. I'd say the face is my personal favorite bit. I really like what they did for the mouth and how they got the details for the teeth. And then here is what you saw from the thumbnail. This is called Gallo 4, and the design is from Andrew Steele. You may remember some of his other giant brick-built beasts from the past. This is no different, yet completely different. I appreciate that the primary pieces used here are mostly Technic on the outside. 
It's hard to get really organic looking details out of these pieces, at least in my experience. So I'm glad to see Andrew got these uh, interesting kind of flapped, fleshy, fin type layers uh, all throughout this aquatic or maybe amphibious looking creature. Just like his other creations, I think the strongest point for this design though is the fact that it really does look lifelike. It feels like it's got a lot of energy, like this thing could just start running at incredibly fast breakneck speed and then do untold damage to whoever its prey happened to be. Andrew took a ton of different pictures. There's some nice little poses here. The face feels really, really creepy. And this is a model that would stand out amongst almost everything else in a studio if you had it built in real life. Now let's jump on over to a build from Aubrey Billine. It is called An Outpost in a Galaxy Far, Far Away. I don't know how much explanation you guys are really going to need. This is just a fun Star Wars themed build. You can see all the different uh, Star Wars kinds of characters, lots of stormtroopers. You can see recognizable aliens. I'm pretty sure that's the Mandalorian in one of the corners. And we have some great builds for uh, different types of buildings, constructions. You have a sort of a desert or Tatooine style building on the left. I'm not gonna say Hoth, but a white building and then a dark bluish gray one with some uh, nice nougat on top. What's nice here is just all of the different details you can see. There's tons of plants and foliage, broken up walkways, loose cords and things hanging from the walls, and of course, lots of colorful characters everywhere. It's these types of dioramas that I think are absolutely excellent when you have tons of extra Star Wars figures left over from lots of sets, and the quality of the builds here are awesome. I particularly like these rounded over arches that we have for all the different doors. Now here is an extremely unique and odd sort of build. It's a perspective kind of build from the designer Joe or J&J &J Bricks. It is called The Quest. Obviously we're looking at some type of forced perspective here. I'm not sure if this was an edited picture put into the screen after the fact. I feel like that could be the case, but either way it's a combination of two different interesting uh, pieces that were meant to be taken and then cut together for one picture that we're looking at now. The fantasy style, the fantasy castle and cast of characters that we have on the computer screen is probably based on something like WoW or EverQuest or maybe Skyrim. Doesn't really matter. I feel like you can probably get the gist pretty well. I love that even in the forced perspective of the screen, the actual picture of the castle has forced perspective as well with the uh, setting sun in the background. The detail for the castle itself is great. I love the different uh, mountain and plant elements. The characters are all creatively put together. There's a lot of personality there. And then when you zoom out, you have nice build for some speakers. And I don't know if this duck is like an inside joke or if somebody recognizes this character or this little animal from something, but it's a funny build. I really enjoy the fact that we have brick separators for the beak. There's a fleshed out keyboard and even hand to make it look like you yourself are viewing all of this as the observer. There's so many artistic layers to this piece, which is super fun. And the build quality is certainly present as well. Now we are jumping to Dan's Brick Builds, and he has something titled Remote Controlled Walking Lego Triceratops. Well, that leaves nothing to the imagination in the title. You can guess what this thing does, and it does it pretty darn well. The photos somewhat cover up that middle gap that you have in the Triceratops as it moves. It needs to have a bit of posability towards the center, but that is a welcomed sacrifice considering the great function that you get out of this piece. The head, body, color combination, even the build for the legs and feet, even though they're mostly, mostly functional, actually look pretty darn decent in terms of detail. An added plus is that I think it scales pretty darn well with the gigantic brick-built T-Rex that came from that Jurassic Park set not too long ago. So if you had them both together, they would look amazing, yet everyone would just go bananas over the actual dinosaur that could move around on its own and sort of on the same level, actually completely not, but we are looking at a build from Nicholas Carlier and it is called Night at the Museum. Technically there is like a giant skeleton T-Rex that can move around. That was the only connection I was making here. And this is just a really cool scene. I just like 
the atmosphere from this build. There's a lot of warmth, there's a lot of color. The build for the globe looks great. I also really enjoy the somewhat reduced size for the T-Rex, but not too much so. And though I can't say I was like a huge fan of the film necessarily, this is just a piece with a wonderful atmosphere. There's all kinds of interesting characters hidden in the corners, tons of artifacts and Easter eggs to look at, and even the outer edges of this build feel very complete and there's nothing that uh, kind of lacks or looks like you'd want to cover up. Super cool build. I think it is up for LEGO ideas right now. And then we are jumping on to the last build of the week from Purple ZGR. This is the Spectre King. As for brick built figures, this is a pretty darn unique guy. I think I have seen that building technique used for the teeth before. And then everything else here is just pretty darn unique. The cone head is a really interesting idea and the two giant arms that look incredibly heavy are really the main points of support for this character. You can see he's got little legs but they're almost shriveled and or not really being used to support the body. The toes are just barely touching the ground. At the same time, I still feel relatively intimidated by a creature like this. The tires that are included for the chest and arms uh, just give you the idea that this is a really, really heavy model. And ultimately, there's just something unique about this brick built figure that I see here that I haven't seen in a while. I can't really seem to put my finger on it though. That's going to be it, actually, by the way, guys, for the top 10 mocks of the week. Of course, there's tons of other pictures flying by the screen. Chances are, if you liked any of these builds, then chances are, if you liked any of the builds that I talked about in this episode, you'll probably like the ones that uh, were essentially runners up or just builds I did not have time to talk about in this episode. Remember, if you enjoy our content, you can always like or subscribe. We do have that web store, www.brickvault.toys. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time at Brick Vault.